Verse 6, For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Now he took off his authority. That's what he was doing here when he took off his robe. He took off his authority. He took off his lordship. That's dying to self. He covered with sackcloth and sitting in ashes was a sign of mourning. He was shown dead to himself and his people. He was dying to self. What do we do when we give our life to the Lord? We lose our life to save our life. So we lose our, we die to self so we can have a new life with Jesus. That's what we do. And this is what this king was doing. He took off his authority. He took off his lordship and showed, hey, I'm no longer lord. I'm no longer king. There is a king that's over me. And I'm submitting to him. I am giving my life to him. In verse 7, he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the degree of the kings and his nobles, saying that neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, let them not feed nor drink water. Not only did the king, but his rulers, his rulers also, of different tribes in that land, were proclaiming, hey, we're going to fast and we're going to give our life to the Lord. And not only the people, it says the animals. Also the animals. Verse 8, But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God, Yet let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. He tells everyone to do what he has done. He's the king. And he's telling everybody, I want you to do what I... He's king. And if the king can do this, a man who thinks, who thought he was king over... And back then, a king was a king. You never went against a king back then. Anybody who even said anything bad about a king was killed. But this king, not only did he do it, but he wanted his people to do it also. It's just like that verse. It says, as, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's why the man is the priest of the house, and he is supposed to make it. Just like this king is doing, men of the house, husbands, fathers of the house, are supposed to do the same thing. Hey, as far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. If you're going to live here with me, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen? What do you think they were crying out to the Lord about? Well, what we all do. We're crying about our evil ways. Lord, forgive us of our evil ways. Before the flood, in Genesis 6:11, it says, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And that's what it said right here. Violence mean, is meaning unrighteousness, lawlessness, ungodliness. That's what violence means. That's the way we act. In the book of Genesis, the world is evil continually. So the world is not going to change. God said, the world is evil continually. Continually. So don't look for no big revival in the land. We're not going to have no big revival in the land, in, on this earth. Now we can't have revival within ourselves. But God said, this world is evil continually. And then verse 9 who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? The king is saying, let us do all that we can. Hopefully, God will change his mind and not destroy us. That's what he's saying here. Repent, that doesn't, God, that doesn't mean God sinned and he's repented. No, repent here means that he, 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 God can change his mind. All right? He's God. Genesis 6-7 and the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. So the Lord, if he wanted to, he could have destroyed Nineveh and everything in it. It repented them that he made that, that he made them, he says. He was sorry that he made them. And like I said, he's not repenting from sin. He's not repenting from a mistake he made either. God don't make mistakes. If my God makes mistakes, then I got to look for another God. Okay? It means he changed his mind. Just like uh, Solomon Gomorrah. He said, fine. He said, if I find 50 people in there that are righteous, will you, not, will you spare it? He said, yeah, I will. 
He couldn't find 50. And so on down, down, all the way down to, I don't know, five or whatever. They couldn't find five righteous people. So what did God do? But God was willing to change his mind if they could find this many righteous people, but they couldn't find any. So God destroyed it. But he was ready to change his mind. Same thing right here. God can change his mind. He can do whatever he wants. Can we see the love of God? Can we? He warns people before he brings judgment on them. He warns us. Before he even takes us to the shed, he warns us. Just like I had to do today, in fact, with my little grandson. I had to warn him. He got in trouble, and I gave him a warning. I said, next time, next time you do this, I'm going to have to take you to the shed. This is what God does for us. He warns us before he takes us to the shed. And why does he take us to the shed? Because he loves us. Amen? Verse 10. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. It says right here, the Lord saw. Saw their repentance. He didn't hear. Oh, we repent. And just heard the words. No, he saw. The people turned. He saw the repentance. Amen? When you repent, like uh, in Corinthians, at the first or second, second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says we become, when we give your life, when you give your life to the Lord, chapter 5, verse 17 says, we become new creatures. So there's going to be a change. So nobody can say, I've repented, I'm a Christian now. And if there's no change in their life, well, what did they repent of? Becoming a, a Christian, you repent of the way you were living. So if there's a repentance, that means turning away from the way you were living, there's a change, and you can see it. But people who say, oh, I'm a Christian, you know, I, I believe in God, and, but you don't see no, no change in their life, did they really give their life to the Lord? They just spoke it. They just said it. Right here it says, God saw their works. God saw their actions. They repented. Amen? A true Christian will have a change in their life. They will not stay the same. If they say, I'm a Christian now, but you see no change in their life, I'm just giving you the words right here. And just like they changed, God changed his mind and he didn't destroy him. Did Sodom and Gomorrah change? Sodom and Gomorrah didn't change. They, he, could, he couldn't find no righteous people to change. What happened to it? He destroyed it. And he would have done the same thing right here in Nineveh. But Nineveh, the king of Nineveh and the people of Nineveh were smart enough to know, hey, this is God. This is the true God. The God of Israel. People knew about the God of Israel. And they feared him. In chapter 4, verse 1. Now listen. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. Jonah was very angry because he knows that God, in verse 2, we'll show why. Jonah didn't want the people of Nineveh to, be, to get saved. Jonah, what the Lord told him to do, he did. But like I said, it was wrong. He did not want the people, and we're going to see why, but he didn't want the people of Nineveh to, get, to, to, to turn to the Lord. Verse 2 and he prayed unto the Lord. This is Jonah. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and a merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repentance thee of the evil. Now this is the reason Jonah disobeyed God. Nineveh was a city of Syria, which was a very wicked country. You read about in books about Syria. It was a very. They were. Syria was worse than Hitler with the Jews. Now we know how bad that was. But if you read history books about Syria uh, back in this time, it teaches how bad they were, how bad they tortured people and killed people. And this is why uh, Jonah's. He didn't want them. He didn't want them to get saved. Jonah didn't want God to let them live, fearing they would overpower Israel. That's what he was scared of. That Nineveh would get right and over, go overpower Israel. And do the same in Israel as they did in Syria. And they did. 
But it wasn't until a hundred years later. When Nineveh repented, the king and the people repented, they did repent. But it wasn't until a hundred years later that Nineveh get back to the way they were. But the king there, the king, the man of the house, made sure the people that were there would live for the Lord. Now after that generation passed and another generation came later, they turned away from the Lord. But, back, but right then and there, Nineveh did repent and, it, and what Jonah feared did come about, but it wasn't until a hundred years later. How many times have we thought that a certain person deserves hell? Because this is what Jonah's thinking. How many times do we do that? I'm going to confess. I see somebody do something pretty bad and makes me angry. I mean, I've had, I, mean I, I have thought it. I hope that person goes to hell. Now, this was back in my younger years as a Christian, you know. Now, I don't do that. If I have a, do when I have a daughter, very beautiful young daughter, and I had a, her boyfriend beat her up, put her in the hospital, and I can say truly from my heart, I did not wish that that boy would go to hell. But that's only because I've grown in the Lord. Now, back in my younger years, I did think that of, of people. I hope they go to hell. Now, as you grow in the Lord, you grow up. And you quit thinking that way. You get the love of the Lord in you. But this is what Jonah was doing. He thought the people of Nineveh deserved hell. We want, we want God's mercy on us, but don't give it to them. And there might be people out there right now who's listening to the CD. They might be thinking the same way, you know. I want God's mercy, but don't give it to those whatever. I'm serious. We need to be like Paul. In Paul, Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 4. And I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible. This is what we need to be like. Paul said, With Christ as my witness, I speak with other truthfulness. My conscience and the Holy Spirit confirms it. My heart is filled with bitterness, bitter sorrow, and underending grief for my people, my Jewish brothers and sisters. I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ, if they would get saved. He was willing to give up his own life if his people would get saved. If his people would give their life to the Lord, he was willing to give up his life so they could be saved. Now that's the kind of heart we need to have. We're willing to give up our life just so someone else or other people would get saved. That's the heart God is looking for. Amen? That's why Jonah disobeyed God. He thought he knew better than God. Jonah thought he knew better than God on what was going to happen. Is this king truly born again? Is he really is he is is he really born again or is he gonna continue in his ways and do away with my people Israel? That's what Jonah's thinking. You know, how many times have we and you don't have to raise your hand, but how many times have we thought our way was better than God? Well, I think I need to do it this way. I know the Lord says this, but I think if I do it this way, now how many times have we done that? This is Jonah. Lord, don't do that. Don't get those people saved because that's it's gonna be it's gonna come back to bite you, the expression. But who knows better? Us or God? Jonah, a, a, a Christian, a preacher, a prophet. And this is the way he was thinking. Verse 3: Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Jonah thinks he has it all figured out. Nineveh will live and go destroy Israel. And he'd rather die than to see this happen. Now this is what Jonah's thinking. He'd rather die. He said, just take my life. It'd be better if I was dead. This is what Jonah is thinking. He doesn't know the way of the Lord, apparently. In verse 4, Then said the Lord, Doest thou well to be angry? Now the Lord didn't say, I understand why you're angry. He's not saying... I understand why you're angry. The Lord is saying, do you have a right to get angry? Do we have a right to get angry with God? Do we have a right to get angry with God? That's what he's saying to Job right here. Do you have a right to get angry with me? This is my world. I made everything. I am God. And you're going to get mad because I want to save 600,000 people? You hear me? Instead of Jonah looking at with it with his spiritual eyes, instead of looking with his spiritual eyes... 
thousands upon thousands of people getting saved, he's looking at it with his fleshly eyes, with his fleshly thinking. Well, if they get saved, they're going to overpower Israel, the Jews, which he is. He's looking at, at it with his fleshly eyes. We, we have spiritual eyes, and we need to learn how to use them. We need to learn how to use them. Because he sounds like us sometimes. This is what we sound like sometimes. Verse 5. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. And there made him a booth and sat under the shadow. Till he might see what would become of the city. <clears throat> he made himself a little shelter to see what was going to happen in Nineveh. Because he wanted to see was Nineveh really going to repent. He's still hoping that Nineveh really really doesn't repent. He'd rather see God destroy the city. Is that a heart of a Christian? No. Verse 6. And the Lord God prepared a gourd, which is a leaf, means leaf, and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head, to deliver him from the, his grief. So Jonah was exceedingly glad of the leaf. Now God took over right here. God took over. He took over. And it's like God. He takes care of us. Here it is, Jonah, not really walking with the Lord, obeyed God, but not in a submissive way. He obeyed him. And right here, God, is, he made this leaf to cover Jonah from the hot sun. A big leaf. God made him comfortable, and Jonah was very happy about it. God made this leaf. Remember that. God made this leaf to cover Jonah from the sun. Then verse 7, God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the gore, the leaf, that was that it withered. The Lord gives, and the Lord can take away. When things go wrong, we will say that the devil, the devil did it. When something goes wrong, we blame the devil. But sometimes it's not the devil. Sometimes the Lord is showing us. This is how we grow in the Lord. Sometimes he has to show us the hard way. Because sometimes we're a little hard-headed and we can't believe his words. But this story isn't about the devil. The Lord took it away. He took that cover away from Jonah. Now in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 it says, In everything, in everything give thanks to the Lord. In everything. What's everything mean? Just good stuff? Everything. everything. He didn't say give thanks to the Lord on good things. No, it says in everything give thanks to the Lord. If He gives it to us, Amen. Praise God. If he takes it away, Amen. Praise God. You hear me? Verse 8. And it came to pass when the sun did arise that God prepared a scorching east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished himself to die and said, It is better for me to die than to live. Are there times you feel this way? Something's going on in your life and you really don't like it. You're really down, depressed or whatever. And you're just like, Lord, just, just take me home. Take me out of here. Sometimes we feel that way. I'm not saying all of us do it, but sometimes we might feel, have that kind of feeling. Now, the Lord is really chastising Jonah here. He's really chastising him. He's going to teach Jonah a lesson. This is the second time he asked to die. But he's not going to let, he's not going to let Jonah off so easy. This is what Jonah wants. But Lord, the Lord said, no, no, no. I'm going to teach you a lesson. And we're going to see that. In verse 9, And God said to Jonah, Thou do well to be angry for the, for the leaf. And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. God said to, to you, Think it right to be angry because of the plant, because the plant is gone now. We rejoice when God gives us blessings that we don't deserve. We should rejoice and be thankful in everything. Because do we, did Jonah deserve that leaf? He, here he was, disobedient. And then when he did obey God, it was with a wrong heart. And what did God do? He gave him shelter. Then the Lord took it away. Did Jonah deserve it? He didn't deserve it from the very beginning. When we get mad, when he takes our blessing away, do we have the right to get mad? No. The Lord is worthy of our praise, our worship. Not because he gives, but just because he is God. People praise Him and worship Him when they're receiving. But we should praise and worship Him even if we're not receiving. 
Because we may not get nothing here. Look at John the Baptist. What did he have? He lived in the wilderness. Ate locusts. Didn't have nothing. But what do you think that man's going to get in heaven? His reward is going to be great. So even though we walk as a Christian down here, we're walking with the Lord, we're living for the Lord, our rewards and our blessings not, not, might not be right now. But I guarantee you, praise God, we will get them in heaven because the Word of God says so. And I believe that. Should we be happy with our salvation that He gives us? Yes. Yes. Amen. And if we did lose, if it's just not, but even if you could lose your salvation, we should praise Him anyway. Because He didn't even have to give it to us. He gave it to us. Remember, we don't deserve it. Remember that. Don't ever, you, don't ever think you deserve something from God. Don't ever think that. Because if you do, you're getting in the flesh. Praise God, praise God, praise God that He even thought about giving us salvation. That He even came to His mind. Praise God. Now, John is angry. He wants to die. His heart is in the wrong place. In the next two verses... God's going to change all that in the next two verses. Verse 10. Then said the Lord, Thou hast pity on the leaf, for which thou hast not labored, neither makest to grow, which came up in the night and perished in the night. The Lord said, You feel sorry for the plant I gave you. For that leaf I gave you, you feel, you feel sorry for it. Which you didn't do nothing to put it there. I gave you that leaf to protect you, to cover you. And the leaf was taken away. And he's not even the one who put it there. And he felt sorry for the leaf. That's what it says right here. He felt sorry for the leaf. And in verse 11, And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand as so much cattle? God is, like I said earlier, God is saying that there is over 120 people who can't even discern from their right and their left hand. We're talking about children here. This is children. Because the city was over 600,000 people. So what he's saying right here, they didn't know their right from their left. Now, who, who doesn't know their right from their left? It's kids. You know, it takes them a little while before they know, okay, right and left. He's talking about kids here. Not only kids, but cattle. Cattle. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city, God is saying? You felt sorry for a leaf that I gave you. The leaf I gave you for protection, for a cover. Shouldn't I feel sorry for a city of thousands and thousands of people? That's what he's telling Jonah right here. You'll feel sorry for a plant that I gave you. This is what God is saying. Which is just a material. It's just material. It's just material. Do you hear me? It's just material. You can have a great big home that God bless you with. You can have all the nice material stuff. It's just material. God's talking about souls. We... We get material things, and, and if somehow, some way, it's taken away from us, we get all upset. And God gave it to us in the first place. Jonah's heart should have been ready to go and try to get people saved. That's what he should have done. That's where his heart should have been. Not in the flesh, thinking, well, if these people get saved, they're going to go and overtake my people. Do you think God, that's, that, that's God's plan? I'm going to get these people saved so they can go destroy Israel. Is that, I mean... How could he even think that? He was in the flesh. He preached them, but his heart was in the wrong place. He had no mercy on them. He had no mercy. The Bible says the world has no mercy. And the world doesn't have mercy. But we have a God who has mercy. God was showing Jonah, you're going to be disappointed because of a leaf. Of a material something. Of a leaf. You're going to get upset all over that. And then you're going to blame me. That I cared about 600,000 people. That I wanted to see them get saved. Do you, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Jonah was all worried, upset about the leaf. And God said, you're going to worry about that? Here I am wanting 600,000 people to get saved and you're worried about this. We see a cat or a dog or a squirrel. We're going down the road. If we run over it, how bad do we feel? Most of us. Some of us don't feel anything. <laughs> But most of us, if we run over a cat or a dog or a squirrel, we get upset, don't we? Do we, do we get upset knowing that the person that's next to us or a family member is dying and going to hell? Do we get that upset? We know this because the Bible tells us 
If they're not Christians, we know where they're going. We know. But we have a family member or a friend. We know they don't know the Lord. We know they're dying and they're dead. They're not dying, they're dead. The Lord says you're dead until you accept Him. Then He gives you life. So they're dead. Do we get upset knowing that they're dead? Do we get as upset with that as we do when we run over a cat or a dog? Seriously, think about it. I've seen people get crazy just because they run over a cat or a dog. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Do we get that upset knowing that we have a family member or a friend who's dead because they haven't received the Lord? I hope you are hearing me. This is what this teaching is on. Many of us are fighting with God because we want to do it our way. Or we don't want to do it at all. We hear the word of God. Either we're going to do it our way or we don't even do it. So when God sends us to do something, we, we should just do it. Because it's going to get done anyway. If he says, Jesse, I want you to go witness to this guy over here. And I just refuse and I'm like, Jonah, I'm not going to do that. Well, God could make the stones to go witness to that person. It's in the Bible. The Lord said, Jesus said, I can make these stones to praise and worship. So if I don't do it, he can get the stones to go over there and witness to that person. What's going to happen to me? I'm out of the will of God because I disobeyed him and I'm losing a blessing. Amen? Disobedience is just not good. It's just not good for us. We suffer when we disobey God. We suffer. You might not know it, but you do. We suffer because we're losing a blessing from God. From God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. We need to be merciful. We need to have the eyes of God. We need to have the heart of God. God wanted these people saved. Jonah didn't have that mercy. So do we want to be like Jonah? Or do we want to be blessed by the Lord for having mercy on other people. And having mercy on other people is not just, I'm not talking about giving them things. I'm talking about leading them to the Lord. Amen.